it's once more into the weird and wonderful world of rave culture we go to track down the sounds they call techno. It's the best way to hide from the taxman. You stick a mask on and off you go. Just hide away. People uh, walking down the street, people harassing you, you don't get none of that at all if you hide yourself away. But then you don't get any of the glamour of being you know, a musician. You do when you're on stage, though. People know you when you're on stage, so that's where you like it. It's where it's supposed to be. <laughs> Spotlight is important to techno artists like Alternate's Chris Pete. For him and all the camera shy techno acts currently dominating the charts, the most important thing about his music is the rave itself. Events like Rain Dance in Barking, just outside London, where people travel in their thousands to dance to music, which has revitalized the rave scene, and put people like 19-year-old Liam from The Prodigy into the charts. It's all about dancing, really. Um, if you go out to a rave and um, you're dancing, you know, you want something to get your teeth into, you, you know, something hard, and people like hard music, you know. Something soft would just mellow the atmosphere right out, you know, and it has to be an intense atmosphere in a rave, you know, and that's the reason why the, the hard stuff's played so much, I think. started in places as far apart as Belgium and Detroit, but it took Britain with its acid house history and raves to turn it into the dance phenomenon of the year. Some critics, though, deride it for its robotic nature and lack of soul, and that includes one of Techno's pioneers, Kevin Saunderson from Detroit's Inner City. It's harder. It's uh, got a lot of loops, a lot of drum loops in it, um, and they sample a lot. I don't think they like it funky over here. I think the less funky, the better, you know, because records you play with any kind of... Uh, uh, soul in it or something that's really funky, it, it seems to have a harder time, especially at these raves. I hope it's to its limits right now. If it goes any further, it might as well be rock and roll. DJ, take control! Come on! 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 Check out the sound, jump all around. Check out the sound, with the sound. Check out the sound. The story of techno is one of popular demand. Despite virtually no radio play and little coverage in magazines, acts like SL2 have forced the mainstream media to sit up and take notice. You don't have to look at the charts now. It's a rave chart, the commercial top 40. And they don't like it because they don't play techno music on Radio 1. Um, which is how they make chart records, you know, you, hit, you get a record like Brian Adams, you hear it on Radio 1 and you go and buy it and that's what makes it a hit, you know. But they don't play techno music and the reason it's getting into the charts is um, because it's so popular and, you know, they can't say it's not popular because it is, it's in the charts, you know, so it doesn't make sense really. <laughs> has enabled hundreds of teenagers up and down the country to make records in their own bedrooms. This track, Crazy Man, the B-side to the Prodigy's new single, like all his music, was recorded in Liam's Essex flat. And Nick Hawke's A&R man for XL Recordings, home of Prodigy, T99, Cubic 22 and SL2, thinks the reason why Techno has such a following might be due to Brian Adams. I think it's as an alternative to all of the, the sort of more banal um, pop you know, and rock rubbish that, that is clogging up the charts. I mean, we've, we've just seen it with, like, Brian Adams having 16 weeks at number one or whatever. Um, you know, young people, they, they don't want to, to listen to that kind of stuff, you know, and they want to, to get as far away from that kind of scene as they can. And I think that um, the sort of music we're doing is, is a good route for them to, uh, you know, to, you know, it's slightly rebe rebellious, the sort of music we're doing, because it's not being played on radio. Generally, it's not getting, any, getting much TV exposure. Um, and I think that the people who are buying the records, you know, appreciate that. 